Bill DeFoy. Welcome back in here to News Junkies. Joining me right now is our life coach in residence, Michelle Hubbard. And Michelle is here. We've been doing a series of exercises regarding the word lift. We've covered the word or the letter L, the letter I, and now we're up to the letter F. And so today, it's the letter F. Yeah. Welcome in here, Michelle. Thank you, Bill. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, it's good to have you with us. So what is it with the letter F? Well, the letter F, which stands for facing fear, is a big one because fear can be a little bit subtle and it can permeate so much of what we're feeling or thinking that we may not be aware of it at first. And so, for example, when we love a feeling and we go in the same space as it and we realize we're sad, it might be that we also realize we aren't really hungry for that cookie or don't really need to call that person to avoid feeling sad and maybe crying. Well, it's the same thing with fear. It may be underneath something like anger or it may even be underneath something like happy happy something more and more we're feeling too guilty to allow ourselves to experience so one of the things I like to have us be sure and notice is what are we really feeling and so the exercise that I teach is going to be me turning the table on you and uh -oh. doing an interview oh wonderful <laughs> this, this should be interesting okay now to make it even more interesting I'm not necessarily going to be interviewing you, but ask you to sense what feeling feels like it's up for you right now. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because the dynamic is obviously reversed. And so someone that does a lot of interviews, you know, you're always cautious about putting the other person on the spot. So that being said, when you're being interviewed, you're on the spot. <laughs> I'm on the spot. This spot right here. And that's how I feel. You feel on the spot. Right. Okay. Um, are you willing to play? I'm willing to play. Okay, thank I've you. Got, I've got the toys out, so let's play. Okay. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is embody how on the spot feels. And become this feeling and how you organize your body, how you organize your thoughts, how when you feel on the spot, on the spot comes forward. And this is more or less what's between you and engaging in your full present you. Okay. Okay. Now, is there a certain posture for on the, how on the spot feels or a certain expression to your face? Um, probably a more, more tense. Yeah. And, you know, it's when you're put on the spot, uh, the way I would interpret it would be that there's almost an invisible wall. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, may I call you on the spot for this interview? You may. Okay. On the spot, where do you live in Bill's body? All over. You, all over. Great. On the spot, Briefly describe a few key life experiences that have shaped who you are today. Um, boy, that's a great question. Um, there has been um, the passing of family members. Um, so you have that loss. Um, that has shaped me. I think uh, sad events, when you go through certain uh, life events, um, you know, it's you, you go through uh, some kind of a change there where um, I, I interject a lot of humor. And so I think one of the compensating things for me is because of the sadness that I want to avoid feeling, I will interject humor, not only to make perhaps the other person laugh, but to help relieve some of that tension from within. A great insight. Now, on the spot, what is your greatest fear? My greatest fear? Um, if you were to ask me that 10 years ago, I probably would have said, quite honestly, death would have been my greatest fear. Um, that is something that I've come to grips with, and that's no longer the biggest fear. Um, 
I think it would be to wake up some morning or go throughout the day and have an accident or perhaps a heart attack and nobody is around to help me out. Yeah, wow. Now, on the spot, what is it that most scares you about that? Again, not having somebody with me when I go through that experience. And what is it that's so scary about that? Being alone. Being alone. Being, being alone. It's, you know, it, it's one of these things where, uh, you know, and, I, and, and you know I'm, I'm single, and, you know, it's, I go to bed alone, I wake up alone. And, and if something were to happen in between those hours and beyond my daily activities, if something were to happen, there's nobody there to, to uh, intervene, as it were. Yeah. On the spot, what do you yearn for Bill to know about you? Ah, uh, that's a, boy, that is a phenomenal question. Um, because life is so complex, I don't know that uh, I would want to narrow it down to one thing. Um, that um, perhaps it would be several things. Uh, one engaging, uh, one perhaps mm. um, uh, one that cares, uh, one that loves, and uh, one that hopes for the best in others. Now on the spot, how can Bill create a friendlier relationship with you? Boy, um, just to be you. Wow. No pretenses, no nothing. Just to be you. On the spot, what do you most want? Happiness. Mm. And what do you most desire for Bill? Same thing, happiness. Okay, now take a breath and allow yourself to more fully become Bill again. Okay. And thank you so much for stepping so fully into this on the spot part of you. Um, may I share what kind of stood out for me? Sure, go right ahead. Through the interview. I was really impressed with the insight that you had around being able to connect feeling sad with your humor and when you were describing on the spot and having the tables turned, I had a feeling you were gonna go with fear, you know, that that was kind of what was gonna be running on the spot, so to speak. But um, from when you talked about the sad and the humor and also the experience of loss of family members and um, the feeling scared about being alone, it feels like on the spot has a lot of sadness that uh, triggers it. And um, it makes sense because then what you most want is happy, which we think of as being the opposite of sad. And yet, maybe in a way, when you were talking about on the spot, most wants you to just be you, in a, in a way, that's kind of the gift that sad is bringing you is something that can make you so happy by helping you engage and not be so alone. And um, I found the interwovenness and kind of coming full circle of your responses really profound. Well, thank you. Yeah. Now, what was that experience like for you? I, I tell you what, that was, for me, um, very insightful. Um, you know, because it, because we're in, a, in an environment where you have to come up with the answers, you know, it's, it's almost like word association. Here's the thought I want you to respond. Here's another spot, uh, a question or a feeling or an idea, please respond. So you don't really have time to process it and digest it. So what you got from that was perhaps as unrefined as you're going to get. Which means is honest. Exactly. And is present and wow, what a gift to share with people this honest, unfacade version of yourself. Thank you so much for being willing to be that vulnerable with me. It was 
a lovely insight into a friend I'm connecting with. Well, wonderful. Michelle Hubbard, I tell you what, life coach extraordinaire. Michelle, I wouldn't be uh, the kind of a host for a program without allowing you to give us your contact information and sharing it with our viewers. Thank you. And I would also like to share that this interview is not something that I created. It's a tool that I learned through Hendrix Institute and that was adapted from their tools by another coach named Juna Mustad. And uh, my contact information is Michelle for you.com and Michelle Hubbard number four letter U at gmail.com. Wonderful. Next time we've got another exercise. It's going to be with the letter T. Join us next time right here on News Junkies, a production of the Heritage Media Group. Thank you.